Hi, this is Karen, also known as Caribou or Caribou's Boutique, and welcome to my second in a series of tutorials about how you can incorporate some easy post work into your rendering workflow. And contrary to popular belief, you do not have to be a master painter to get some great results out of programs like Photoshop. And I would know because I'm definitely not a master painter. Um, my artistic skill with pen and brush uh, extends to stick people. That's part of why I got into rendering 3D art instead of creating it with a, a pen because, uh, well, I'm a pretty poor artist without a computer. So in my first tutorial, I explained how you can get the different renders that you'll need to get into post work out of DAS Studio using um, the atmospheric cameras available in the DAS marketplace. Now, in Poser, I am also going to use a tool that is not native to Poser, and it's the Advanced Render Settings 2 Python script available at the Runtime DNA Marketplace. And I can't say enough good things about uh, that particular plugin. It gives us a lot of flexibility with our renders that is not natively available, or at least easily available, in Poser. Part of the reason that we do some of these effects in post work isn't because we can't do them within our 3D programs. Usually good lighting and a lot of test renders are able to um, accomplish most of the same things that we'll do in post work. But with post work, we can do them much more quickly and with a lot more precision than we can usually do inside of our 3D applications um, alone. So. One of the things that I'm definitely going to want to get out of my render is a depth of field. When you look through a, a traditional, normal camera, you can see a great depth of field using some uh, photographic strategies that make the focal point of your, sh of your shot nice and crystal clear, and gradually as you move out of that focal range, it gets um, blurry. So we're going to be able to do that using our post work. We can also do that without post work. Poser has the ability for you to set um, a depth of field setting on your camera and uh, using your render settings, you can generate a pretty good depth of field within Poser. The problem is that it's very difficult to visualize before you start. You don't really know how much blur you're gonna get until you've done a test render or two. And in order to make it look um, smooth and not grainy or, or pixelated, you have to use very good render settings, which of course means that it takes a lot longer. And if you're having to render, you know, several different test renders before you get to your final product, it can be very time consuming. So um, having said that, let's jump on in and see the renders that we're going to need. Obviously, first of all, here's my regular old plane render. Um, nothing fancy doesn't have a tremendous amount of contrast in this in the scene. You can see her hair kind of blends into the tree behind her. Um, and we can improve this pretty dramatically inside of uh, a Photoshop later on, provided that we have at least two other renders, which I will show you right now. Um, the first of which is the occlusion pass. And this, of course, just uh, generates the shadowing between various pieces of geometry where they come together. Uh, and this really helps us bring out the contrast, the shadows in our scene with a lot of flexibility. So I can highlight shadows in certain places and I don't have to do it in other places, which is a, a, a really great tool that helps you um, kind of fine tune exactly what you want to see in your image. And the other render pass that we're going to bring into Photoshop with us is the Z-depth map. And of course that shows us how far away things are from our camera. Uh, people with some versions of Poser, I know Poser Pro in 2010 and 2012 and 2014 all have the ability to render a Z-depth map um, right along with your regular render. And it's, um, it's a great idea. Unfortunately, as I'll show you here, the, um, the output isn't always tremendously useful. So here in our scene, our leaves on our trees are really little planes in terms of their geometry, but they've been made to look like leaves using a transparency map. And unfortunately, Poser's um, native z-depth mapping that it does uh, you know, out of the box doesn't account for these different leaf shapes. So this, tremendously useful when we go into post work. This, well, not so much so. 
Um, and that's why using this Python script, the advanced render setting Python script, makes your job so much simpler. So having said that, let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, so the good news is that generating these two maps uh, in Poser using the advanced render settings Python is really just a couple of clicks of the mouse. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, when you purchase the script at uh, Runtime DNA, you automatically have access to both the Poser 9 and up and the Poser 8 version of the script, uh, which is useful if you have an older version of Poser. So I'm going to go ahead and open the script. Script. ShaderWorks, Advanced Render Settings, and Poser 9. And there it is. The first column should look pretty familiar. They're the same settings that you have to select in the normal Firefly render setups here. Um, so this should kind of look familiar. Casting shadows, subsurface scattering, all of the things that are in this dialog appear here in the first column. Um, but of course there's a whole lot of other things that we can do using the Python script that the uh, the standard render settings don't cover. And um, it's really easy to do this with the Python script. It's just a couple of mouse clicks. Um, I'm going to turn off some things that I don't need. I'm not going to be casting shadows and I don't need subsurface scattering. Um, I do definitely still want to leave smooth polys and displacement on because those can actually change the texturing, the geometry in your scene. And I'm also going to leave ray tracing on because that's how occlusion is calculated inside of um, your render engine. Um, the only other thing I really need to check here is the ambient occlusion checkbox. And I'm going to unclick the default render pass, the, the normal colored render pass, because I've already done that. And it, it, in case you didn't know what something is, another great functionality built into this is if I just hover, it tells you exactly um, what each of the little checkboxes does. So you can see ambient occlusion is, is going to be checked, and it even tells you that if you don't have an ambient occlusion light in the scene, it'll calculate it for you. Um, so having said that, <laughs> it's pretty much just a matter of clicking the button. Um, so it'll set up the scene and don't be alarmed when it reloads the textures because um, if you have it set up uh, where the textures have been loaded in your initial render, uh, the Python script will load them all over again. And you can actually set it up to do all of your render passes one right after the other. So if you wanted to check all the boxes, you could walk away and have a cup of coffee and, and come back and you would find your your render already done. So while this is cooking um, and generating our occlusion map, I guess it's worth telling you a little bit about uh, ambient occlusion and, and um, why it's important. Um, the render engines that come, well at least the Firefly engine that comes with with Poser, um, doesn't by default have a setting to include the shadowing that occurs when two things are close to each other. Um, and without occlusion, things can kind of look dull and, and not very lifelike. So you can see pretty clearly how much um, shadowing, how much depth in the scene that you get just by having this occlusion pass. So there it is. Fantastic. Um, I would go ahead and I would save this and, and keep it for my next uh, step in the process, which will be in, in uh, Photoshop. And then I am going to just go ahead and open the script up again. Um, ShaderWorks, under settings, P9. Um, and now all you really have to do is uncheck that box and you're going to check the Z-depth map instead. Um, the depth map has the ability to, um, you can calculate it automatically, so you don't even have to think about it. The Python itself will um, determine the different uh, depths uh, that the scene will render. So by default, um, Poser calculates the depth of field based on the closest object to your camera and the farthest uh, object in your scene. Unfortunately, if you have something in your scene that's super, super, super far away, it can kind of make this um, this render pass blend into itself. So you can choose and it'll automatically set it up. Or even neater, you can not only set the auto value, but then go ahead and see what it is that it calculated. Um, 
So I know for a fact that this 3,400 uh, maximum depth is far further than I need it to to calculate. I, I want the back of my render, the way back part of my render, to be a lot more blurry than the front part. So I'm just going to go ahead and shorten this up. Um, and I don't remember exactly what I shortened it to, but I'm going to choose maybe something about half that. Um, and the reason I'm picking this, and this number is not completely random, if you look in your scene and you look at how far things are away from the camera, uh, if the last thing that you want to be the blurriest in your scene is, in this case, 1,500 inches away, then you can kind of ignore everything that comes after it. And again, once I have this set up, all I have to do is um, is hit render. And if I really wanted to, I can even turn ray tracing off because we don't need it for this part of it. And it, an incredible amount of swiftness it will it will generate that z depth map. Um, it's really fast because the only thing that it needs to do is calculate how far away stuff is. So you can see this popping out pretty quick, and so if you didn't like the depth that you had here, you could adjust it really easily using that uh, dialog box. Um, and you can see the difference between um, a depth that's set up uh, at 1500 um, inches versus the automatic um, selection that the script does. So here I go. Again, remember, it. Um, I added that 1500. If we went ahead and left it as the um, value that it automatically calculated, which is about 3400, um, you can see the difference in, um, well, the depth of the depth map, how much more or less contrast you get between things. So you can see that the distance in the back is completely black and the things that are closer are far more um, white. So you get less contrast in the foreground, meaning that there will be less blur close to your figure. Um, so having all that done, that's pretty much all you need in Poser. Obviously, um, save them into uh, three separate files and then get ready to head on into Photoshop because uh, we're done here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.